Worldwide Flight Services is a ground handling organization, mm. and that's the organization that I work for. So I'm an operations manager. So I'm in charge of the uh, the imports and the exports operation at Worldwide Flight Services. So what we do basically, we almost like the middleman. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are the tower of everything. Now, for argument's sake, a freight forwarder wants to export shipments to various countries. What will happen is they make bookings with the airline carriers. And we as the ground handler, we handle and are responsible for for ensuring the safety and that cargo is built up in accordance with the with IATA, uh, the International Air Transport Organization, in, including uh, abiding by civil aviation uh, rules as well. So we receive the cargo from the freight forwarders. We then uh, conduct security checks where we screen the cargo. So um, we we normally look for explosives. We we don't really look for your marijuanas and your 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 drugs. If we find those, that's a bonus. But our main function is it's passenger safety. We look for explosives, mm-hmm. and once that is done, we then move the shipments into our facility. Then we make the couple known. So once the cargo is is from the freight forwarders, it's unknown. Once we receive it and after screening it via security protocols, we then make it known. We then build up the cargo according to what contours when an aircraft pallet or a, an aircraft a ULD, which is a unit load device. And then you have your ramp handler that will come take the cargo to the aircraft. On the import side, what we do is we receive cargo from the aircraft via the ramp handler and us as the ground handler, we then debulk the cargo. So it comes to us in a unitized form. We then debulk or deconsolidate the cargo and we then move it inside the warehouse where your walking clients such as yourselves or freight forwarders uh, can come and connect the shipments from us. So we don't just give them the, the shipments. We work hand in hand with customs where we have to check that the clients have customs releases and they've paid their duties and vets. And once that is done and they've got a customs release that indicates that the shipment is released from customs where duties and vets have been paid for, we then will release the shipment out of our warehouse management system to the clients. So we basically, I can say we are a border, a border post as well. Absolutely. You have your air side, that's where we are, and we you have your land side, and that's where we are. So we in the we in the middle. We we can regard ourselves as a border post. We've got WFS, which is worldwide flight services, flight right? Yeah. Then we've got uh, a sets group, I'll, I'll send you all the information with regards to the sets group so that you can also have a look at it. Uh, because on, on, on our side, yes, there is information with regards to the sets group. So it's a leading provider of food and gateway services. Oh, so they, they basically in hospitality, but, uh, they, they purpose is mainly the food. Okay. That's the main purpose in in aviation and as well as uh retail chains. Oh, I see. I so see. that's that that's what they do. So uh, their website is www.sats.com. Okay. So it's a company that's based in Singapore. Wow. What I would like to know first uh, before just going too far how long have you been? Um, would this be in aviation? Are you in the aviation industry or is it logistics uh, or supply chain? How would you define um, the industry that you're in? I'll define it as as supply chain. Why I'm saying that it's because we in the center. So you, you have your logistics companies like your DSVs, yes. your Bidvest International Logistics. Mm-hmm. So what, what they do is they will go collect cargo or shipments from their own clients that want to export shipments. Yeah. 
they then take it to their facility where they pack it and make it ready for carriage. Yeah. They then bring, they then book the shipments with the airlines that we handle. They then bring it to our facility where we build it and then we move it to the aircraft. Yeah. We in aviation because we are handling the airlines, oh. and we we then regulated by the South South African Civil Aviation Authority, Authority okay. and we are also regulated in terms of the International Air Transport Association. Oh yes, so we yeah so with IATA uh, the the airline um, association. Um, Trans, uh, uh, the International Transport Asso Association, what what they do is they they give us or normally we buy books from them that tell us how to handle different shipments. Oh. For argument's sake, if I've got a dangerous goods shipment, it tells me how to check in a dangerous goods shipment. If I've got perishables, it tells me how to check in a perishable shipment. If I've got uh, live animal, it tells me how to handle live animals, right? So each and every commodity that I handle, there's a book from the uh, International Travel Association mm -hmm. that, that I see, say this is how you need to handle it. And each and every special shipment has to be checked in before it actually, actually goes to the aircraft. So I would say that we we... We are a support function for the freight forwarders, including the airline carriers. Oh. So we are just we're just in between the supply chain, but we are in aviation as well. So we are, I wouldn't say that we are a one-stop shop where we collect shipments, we create the customs release, yeah. and we move it to the. So we 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 not um, if the ground handler, which is worldwide flight services, had the capabilities of when receiving a shipment from the aircraft, which is imports, then arranging a customs release while the shipment is still at our facility and having trucks to deliver to the FIDAL client. Um, we might be not so favorable with the likes of your South African Parcel uh, Association yeah. uh, and, and your um, freight forwarders associations because We'll be encroaching into their business. So we can't be, we can, we can do that. But however, there they will be a, a lot of resistance from the market. I see. For the yeah. I, I, I see. So it sounds, it seems as if um, what you do is basically the middle, I was per se, like the middleman who um, officiates a lot of uh, the activities that happen within um, that aviation, freight, transportation of goods, cargo, I would imagine. Yeah. So that's what we basically do. Okay. And how long have you been in this industry? So I started out at Bitvest uh, International Logistics when it was still called uh, Safco Penalpina. Okay. So that was in 2008. So I, I, I had the opportunity of starting on a leadership program. Uh, I did freight handling uh, logistics and, and obviously moving up the, the, the ladder with uh, Bitvest International Logistics until 2015. Wow. So from 2008 until 2015, now I was with them. That's when I moved into telecommunication with Altec Nefstar, uh, but doing the logistics and warehousing part with them. Then from there in 2016, then I moved into aviation. I can call it aviation or warehousing within aviation. Yes. Or logistics within aviation. That's when I started in April of 2016. Okay, great. Yeah. So it's it's almost uh, I'm inside, uh, not on the other side, which is freight handling and and your core logistics, where they do your contract logistics your transportation, mm -hmm. your freight forwarding and clearing. So I'm I'm facilitating the handover of shipments that are customs released. Now, tell me something. How, uh, in relation to what happens on the road with road freight, we saw it towards the end of last year, big deregulations coming in uh, from our ports, 
uh, you know, there's a pushback. Those effects from a mode of transport like uh, the shipping to road where there's trucking, what impact has that had or what impact does it have on um, the aviation cargo um, industry that you're in? Okay, so for for argument's sake, look at it this way. So you have your you have your vehicles in UTNAG enough. Mm-hmm. So you have your vehicles at VW and you need to ship it, right? But then your harbors are not working. Oh yeah. So that was that that was an issue uh, last year. It's still an issue where your harbors are not working. Then you have VW that wants to take a concept vehicle overseas because the main manufacturing plant is right here, right in South Africa. Now, because they can't ship it via sea freight, the other option is air freight. Now, it has to be transported via road freight up inland to ORT International Airport, right? Or it can go to Cape Town Airport uh, or it can go to Durban. But let's say for argument's sake, they decide to bring it via road freight to to ORT International Airport. Now, there's there's dynamics now where the client suffers harm because now the costs are going to be high for them. They pay road transportation and they're going to pay air freight costs as well. So that, that, that has caused harm to the client itself and however, the transport uh, side of things, the transport mode, which is uh, road transport, is gaining, right? It's gaining in terms of movement of, of cargo from, from ports to inland. So sea freight is suffering because of, of certain issues and, and mismanagement at, at harbors, but road freight is then going to benefit because they are now able to move certain commodities to airports because sea freight is not working. Now, but however, uh, you saw last year as well, road transport also suffered because people burn trucks for no apparent reason. We, uh, yes, the uh, so it was inflamed. Yes. Now, it, it becomes an issue because now goods are stuck at let's say VW, it cannot go via sea freight. It, co- it cannot via go via a road freight. Uh, and then it disturbs the whole supply chain. And by the time everything is normalized, there's already a backlog at VW. Now that backlog then causes something that we call a bullwhip effect, uh, where now tran- Road transport cannot meet the demand. Yes, because so many uh, there's so many of of items to move via road freight uh, to the airports. Uh, now they can't meet that demand. Uh, by the time the sea freight or or the harbors open up again, or they've got enough equipment to move these commodities. They can't as well because they can only accommodate maybe about uh, three ships at the, at the port and they cannot accommodate all of them at one given time. So it disturbs the, the whole uh, supply chain if things are not going according to plan and if there's mismanagement as well. So it is challenging transportation if things are not going according to plan and if there's mismanagement whether from from the airport, whether from transportation. So for argument's sake, let's say I've got a first flight, a second flight, and a third flight, and I have to wait for a truck and where the, the, the cargo is booked for the first flight. So if that truck does not come on that first flight, remember I've already made provisions for that cargo on that flight. Yeah. Which means that my, my flight is going to go empty because the cargo did not make it in time. Now, I've already got a second flight where it's already full to capacity with cargo that I'm expecting. Now, the cargo for that first flight has to be moved to the second flight, which means that there will be other cargo that is bumped into the third flight. Now, the flight, third flight also had cargo, which will then be bumped to the next day. Mm. You see what ripple is? Well, is, that, is that so it's, 
is it delayed from road trade? It delays the other part as well. Tell me something. So the, 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 the interconnectedness of these different modes of transport has got a, a direct impact on one to the next. It's like a chain effect, right? Mm. What I want to know is road benefits or road started off as benefiting. Now that we they, there's been talks of uh, new regulations coming in, do we see rail or what, what, what is your perception? How can we buffer if, if, if road is not able to take up or, or meet demand? What do you think would be some of the solutions in order to buffer a uh, supply chain in South Africa as well? Because transport in South Africa is actually our, our biggest export market, you know, and, and, and transport is involved in every sphere of business. To look at the road, road transport in particular. It, uh, I would say that uh, since 2020, they they've been growing they've been growing in a sense that there is no rail mm. remember uh, rail stopped and after it stopped they the there was talks that it will come back but it never came back mm -hmm. so that that disturbed transportation in totality in south africa where from the coastal Certain commodities were moved via rail. You had your bulk, you had your liquid, you had your, your automotives that moved via rail. Mm -hmm. However, that's absent now. Uh, and because rail was, a, was a, a thing of the past, it's now a thing of the past where everything has been vandalized. You don't see train stations anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you don't see your, your spur lines anymore. They... They stole everything for, for metal. They sold as, as scrap metal. So we can we can simply say that there is no rail. And that has put a strain on road transportation. It, the road transportation has benefited in, in that there is no rail. However, we have put pressure on road transportation, even though they are benefiting. Oh, yeah. They, they are benefiting, but there's quite a lot of pressure because... There is no rail. Wonderful. So until rail until rail comes back, then you won't have this traffic congestions at, at the harbors. Mm. You won't have this road congestions on, on, on our highways and, and this multiple accidents that you see where, mm. uh, where when a truck goes via Van Rienen's pass, mm. one accident, then the whole day, the whole and, day, uh, the the three, the whole day it's, a problem. Yeah. it's a problem. Then vehicles have to be diverted. Mm. Uh, so that's the current issues that we faced with. So open up rail. Uh, this organizations, your 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 rail organizations have to meet up with 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 the, the transport MECs. They have to find a way, work with Prasa, and 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 find a way because you can see uh, clearly. Uh, Loazi, you you have your 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 MECs, you have your ministers of transport, but these certain organizations that have skill, they the government needs to tap in those organizations so that they can find assistance in making this work. With without them, I can guarantee you, uh, it, it will never work. Wow. Let's go back to the airport. What is your average day like uh, when you start working? Uh, we have a lot of students that listen to our podcast and, you know, most of them, we find that when they go to university after school, then they study whatever subjects they're studying or modules or courses. There's a disconnect between them studying and then when they go into the work environment, some people get a culture shock and you find that they, they, they just get a culture shock in terms of this might not be what the person had in, in mind, you know. I don't think universities, I'll be honest, I don't think universities today prepare us for the current workplace that we see. I mean, there's a lot of transformation happening in workplaces. What would you say your your day is like um, at work, at the World uh, Worldwide Freight um, Services? And then just take me through your average eight-hour day, what it involves. So on, on our side, uh, 
uh, what it involves is the preparation of your imports, uh, shipments that you are going to be receiving, uh, expecting. So we know what we are expecting uh, via messaging that we receive from origin stations where the cargo originates. So we will receive it an airwayable document that tells us what we are expecting. Now, what we are expecting, we should then uh, be prepared in terms of if we are going to be receiving a human remain, mm -hmm. someone who is South African that passed on uh, in another foreign country, we need to be engaging with funeral homes and the family so that there is no hiccups when the human remain gets to South Africa. If you're going to be receiving a special shipment like a cat or a dog, you need to engage with different parties like your, your state vet. So you can't hand over an animal to, to a client without the state vet checking it. So we have to make sure that we call the state vet and tell them that I'm expecting an animal. If there's wildlife that's coming, you have to inform the the, the relevant department, uh, your your department of fisheries, forestries, and environment. If you are receiving your your live uh, live fish, your ornamental fish, yeah. so there's different departments, organizational departments that we we engage with. If you are going to be receiving pharma pharmaceuticals, yeah. you need to form import health. Uh, of the shipments that are inbound. Uh, if you're going to be receiving shipments that you suspect are, are, are contrabands, uh, you need to inform your customs, your SAPS. So there's different departments that we work with even before we receive the shipments. So that's the import side of things. On And we have to ensure that we've got the right equipment within our facility before we even get the shipments. You you need to make sure that you've got the necessary forklifts for the decoupling of those shipments and staging them inside your, your warehouse. You need to make sure that you've got adequate scanners to scan in the shipments into our warehouse management system.